Well, as you may have heard by now, there was a debate Thursday night, and it was um, it it was a debate I think between uh two seniors, and yeah, uh, Trump won, Biden lost, and then I'm going to give you some analysis as to why I think that was the case, being as unbiased as possible. Um, as you know, if you've watched the channel, uh, I don't like Biden obviously, but I don't have any particular love for Trump either, especially after this recent uh, a uh, whole shenanigans going on in Virginia. 5th District, where he largely helped oust, seemingly oust, pending a recount Congressman Bob Good. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We're going to recap the video today, and we are going to uh, recap the debate, I should say, in the video today, and we're going to uh, see what it means for the country going forward. So buckle up and get ready, because this is Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. Okay, sorry, I sound a little bit, uh, you know, bored almost in the opening. I was kind of doing that for effect, but we're back to normal now. Let's get into this video today. Um, we're gonna. I took some notes during the debate. I did force myself to watch slash listen to most of it. I was doing other stuff like buffing my truck for part of the time, but I was. Uh, I watched some of it. I listened to pretty much the whole thing. So we're going to. Talk about exactly how I think it went down and what the different um, points were to take away from it. Biden got to open. Uh, I believe, uh, I don't, well, I don't remember if it was him or Trump that opened now, but, but basically both of them had their openings. I believe Biden opened first. But anyway, point being, <clears throat> so he opened and right off, it was not a good, it was not a good uh, opening for him. He, the second he started talking, his voice sounded really weird. His campaign tweeted out, I think during the middle of the debate, that he's fighting a cold, okay? Um, if by cold they meant the drugs he was all high on were, was making his voice funny, then yeah, probably so. <laughs> um, there's no doubt he was he was jacked up. I mean, he was, he was loaded and ready to go. Um, it's interesting because he started off really bad. Like, he started off as normal Biden bad. Then he kind of got better toward the middle of the debate, and then he slacked off badly again at the end. So I don't know exactly why that was. I think Ben Shapiro, who I'm also not a big fan of, but I think he uh, speculated that maybe they had given him uh, the shots, whatever it was they gave him. They they gave it to him too close to the debate time, so they didn't have time to kick in by the beginning. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was his voice sounded weird. That was not a good start. Um I'll get to more of like the way he presented himself later, but as far as the opening goes, it was completely rehearsed, and you would expect that in an opening, um, in a way like you know you expect to be basically talking points, and it was it was it was all talking points. You know, you had Scranton Joe at the dinner table, sitting around with old you know Papa Biden, who once you know told him that two gay dudes making out in the middle of the 1960s was true love. That's neither here nor there. Go look up that story. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it was completely rehearsed. And it wasn't just that it was talking points. It just sounded rehearsed. And so did Trump's, for the record. Um, I'm not saying that was strictly Biden, but it did. It wasn't a great opening. But again, the voice was kind of a weird start, and he just did not present himself well. He looked weak. Like, physically, he looked weak. As for Trump's opening, um, my main problem, yes, it was a bit rehearsed. Again, not as badly as Biden's, but it was definitely rehearsed. And he took credit for his COVID response. That really annoyed me because he was talking about how basically he, we, they were getting COVID in check and everything, and then Biden came along and enforced lockdowns and mandates and everything. Trump's administration recommended the lockdowns and mandates. They didn't force anything federally. Biden's federal administration has tried to enforce vaccine mandates and military and stuff. But <clears throat> as far as like going down to your grocery store and you would get, you know, looked at mysterious or looked at kind of, uh, you know, angrily if you weren't wearing a mask. That was all because of Trump's recommendations. He recommended the different states lockdowns and masks. So that was completely on his administration. So he has can take absolutely no credit for the COVID response. He should have never mentioned that. He should have shut up. So again, I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible. I'm just telling you what I think the candidates didn't do well and what they did do well. And if it sounds like I'm biased toward Trump, it's because generally Trump did pretty well and Biden was just horrible. I mean, he was just horrible. And I don't want to sound like a broken record here, because I'm sure you've already heard this, so I'll try to provide some interesting insight. But um, as far as some different topics went, they talked about abortion early on. Um, <clears throat> and I will say, obviously, you know, I'm a 100% pro-life. I believe life begins at conception, and there should be no abortions allowed in the U.S. That's just my position. You probably don't like that, statistically speaking, but oh well, that's my position. Um, and the good news is, for in terms of for Republicans, um, for Trump... 
he was able to come off sounding like the moderate. He took the shot at Ralph Northam. He said the former Virginia governor who was talking about, uh, you know, setting the baby aside. We'll decide what to do with them after birth, basically. Biden, you know, he, we knew he was going to try to hammer Trump on abortion, and it didn't work. He tried to sound like the moderate, and he did not. Um, he he was the one that sounded like the radical. He um, said that he wouldn't denounce um, abort. He wouldn't say abortions. Uh, couldn't be done, that he opposed abortions in the third trimester and after birth, so literally murder. Like, I mean, I know it's murder in the womb as well, but especially out of the womb, it's, like, what do you call that if not murder at that point? But, um, yeah, he, he did not come off sounding like the moderate at all. He come out, came off sounding like the radical, which was a win for Trump. Social Security, as far as that goes, um, Biden claimed Trump wanted to cut Social Security, which is supposed to sound really scary. Um, it didn't, I don't think it really landed. It, nothing Biden said landed, because even when he had some decent talking points, he just couldn't, he was mumbling and and stumbling over his words, and it just didn't sound good, and so he couldn't really get his point across. Um, I didn't think it really landed. His answer as to how to keep Social Security benefits from being cut in the future was to make the rich pay their fair share, and I mean, you can look up montages from, uh, probably the RNC has made some, I think Don't Walk, One, Don't Walk Run Productions on YouTube has made some montages of Biden. Pay your fair share. Pay your fair share. Pay your fair share. <laughs> and then he bursts into flames and descends into the depths of the earth. But no, that that, that second part didn't happen. But <laughs> the pay your fair share. Um, that is, that's what he loves to say. He loves to say make the rich pay their fair share. Trump only cut taxes on the rich and all that. The rich pay too much in taxes, as do every single other person in America. And I hate to sound like, you know, uh, the libertarian here, where the libertarian in me, I guess, is coming out a little bit if you want to say that. I'm not saying there are, should be no taxes. Obviously not. So I guess the libertarian is not coming out on me. There should be taxes. There should be, and it's completely biblical, and it's completely right for government to impose taxes. But the fact that <clears throat> some people, you know, you lose... Depending on your tax bracket, depending on your filing status, you might lose a quarter of your paycheck. You might lose half of your paycheck. You might lose half of your paycheck um, to taxes, which is just insane. Small business owners especially have to do a lot to avoid incredible taxes. Lots of they got to do itemized uh, write-offs and everything. But anyway, as to Social Security, Trump's response was that millions of people were pouring into our country and getting on Social Security, which I thought was a decent response. Um, you know, he, he pointed out. He said many, many times in the past, he's kind of run contrary to a lot of Republicans in that he said, we're not messing with entitlements. We'll find other places to cut. And I think that entitlements are fine to cut. I think entitlements should be. I think uh, my personal plan for Social Security, if I was president, would be you're, we're going to just completely end the Social Security program, not to everyone. But basically, if you're under the age of, I'm spitballing here, but let's just say you're under the age of 35 you're done. You're not getting Social Security. If you're under, if you're over the age of 45, you'll or over the age of 35, you'll keep contributing to Social Security. But then once you retire, you get it and you're done. No one else gets Social Security, and eventually the program ends. But it's still reasonably fair. That way, those who have been paying for Social Security but are still young, they're done. They don't have to pay it anymore. Those who are have been paying the Social Security and are a little bit older will continue to. They'll get the Social Security benefits. Then we're done. We're done with Social Security. That would go a long way toward lowering the federal deficit, toward ending the um, uh, lowering the national debt, or stop adding to the national debt. And at the end of the day, it's just not constitutional. Nowhere in the Constitution does Congress have the enumerated powers to to take money from its citizens to then give them back when they're old. That is the responsibility of of people to save and invest their money wisely. They don't need the government to help them out with that, whether it be state or local or federal governments. And there's an argument state and local governments can do that. They can have their own sort of social security programs if you want. The federal government is simply not allowed to constitutionally. I know no one cares about the Constitution anymore, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. And a lot of seniors especially, even senior Republicans, they hate it. They, they go crazy if you say, we need to cut social security. Well, I, it's my right to it. I earned it. Yes, I agree you have a right to your money, but, not, but social security as a program should end. <clears throat> which is where my plan comes in. So as far they talked about child care costs. This is not a topic that a president needs to be this, that presidential candidates need to be discussing. This has nothing to do with Congress or the president uh, constitutionally. Again, I don't know why they're talking about child care costs. That is, it just has nothing to do with the president or shouldn't. So I, that was another point I just thought I'd throw in there. Uh, one of the other ones they talked about was, will Trump accept the election results? I thought he actually had a decent answer to a pretty tough question which was basically, yes, if it's free and fair, and he didn't harp too much in 2020. He needed not to. Most Americans 
have questions about 2020, but they don't necessarily think it was completely rigged. You know my thoughts on it if you've watched my previous episodes. So I thought Trump had a decent response. Um, and then he said, if it's free and fair and good is how he put it, but I think he was just saying a free and fair election. And, you know, demonstrably so, then yeah, he'll accept the results. And I think that's perfectly fine. That's not the, you know, the answer they were, they were, you know, pretending to be gunning for. The answer they were pretending to was, you know, yes, I'll accept the election results, period. What they really wanted was Trump to say, I will contest the results. He wasn't going to say that, obviously. Uh, for the closing arguments, Biden went first. Uh, he claimed that Trump wanted to raise taxes, which I thought was weird. There's no evidence for that. Uh, just the opposite, actually. He proceeded to stutter and pause a lot. The whole debate was bad, the beginning especially, and then toward the end, the closing arguments especially was bad. Came back from that commercial break, had our closing arguments, and it was bad. He stuttered and paused a lot. Um, I mean, I don't... There will be people that still deny that Biden has dementia, but no one actually believes that. Literally no one in the country actually believes that he does not. It was mostly an economic and a handout speech. Um, nothing overly significant. Biden wasn't impressive, and, and again, he just stuttered so bad. Um, so many times. Trump's wasn't overly impressive either. It was it was just fine. He started to out, he started by talking about military strength and that Biden is basically all talk and no action. And then he went on to talk about things he changed in his first term that pretty much are inconsequential in the grand scheme of things to most voters. It wasn't an inspiring closing closing speech. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, Trump didn't shine, but he didn't need to. Biden stuttered and repeated talking points when he was talking. And when he wasn't talking, he did one of three things. He stared into space with a mixed look of confusion and anger. He would go like that off to the sidelines. If you're listening to this through audio, you can't see my face. But it's, if you saw the debate, you know what I'm doing. He's just kind of looking around like this. And if he didn't do that, he smirked, I guess, to display like nonchalance or something. Bump my microphone. But I guess he was like trying to display nonchalance. He just kind of like over that like Trump. It was looking really stupid. Um, or he did a kind of a combination of those things at someone or something off stage. He kept looking off stage over this way to his left or right as we viewed it. So I don't know what he was looking at. Maybe it was Dr. Jill waving an ice cream cone at him, telling to, you know, encouraging him. Um, but yeah, um, Trump stayed pretty much disciplined and presidential, and that was what he needed to do. It wasn't overly impressive by Trump, but he just needed to let Biden self-destruct and not make a fool of himself, and he did do that. Therefore, Trump won the debate. Uh, Biden was very obviously looking old, physically, dementia-riddled, mentally, verbally. He just, it was a bad performance. Trump went in the debate with one goal, which was don't screw up, let Biden do the screwing up, simply by going on and on and being himself. Um, and Trump, he did, he did do pretty well. Like I said, he was very disciplined, exactly what he needed to do. And then, um, you know, again, he said pretty much presidential. It was, it was a good look for him. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty professional debate. And it went very well until, you know, when the two started talking about their golf game. That was a little bit confusing. And then Trump goes, look, let's not, look, let, let's not act like children. Let's not act like children. That's not a great Trump impression. I'm sorry. But that's the best I got right now. I have to think about it a little bit more. But <laughs> I thought it was funny. They're arguing about their golf game and Trump's responding. He's like, let's not act like children. It was a good response and before the moderators could cut him off. Speaking of the moderators, one of the best moderated presidential debates in modern history I mean, yeah, the, the guys are biased, CNN, you know, Dana Bash and Jake Tapper, but they didn't show it. It was really good. They they told them how much time, the candidates, how much time they had left. They repeated the question when needed. And other than that, they pretty much let them go. They didn't try to fact check them constantly. I mean, it was, it was a good moderating, good moderating. Um, and so a good job. Kudos to CNN. Um, you know, you're not going to hear me say that often, but if we have another debate between the two, like they've agreed to on ABC, which I don't think we will, but if we do, we'll see if that is moderated as well. So I wanted to read as we close here this um, from CNN, this article post-debate. Um, sorry, I messed with my eye. I got something in it. Um, but here's the, from an article from CNN after the debate. <clears throat> Democrats are despairing over President Joe Biden's debate performance Thursday night, a showing so halting that some even privately raised questions about whether he should remain the party's nominee. Biden appeared on stage with a soft, halting voice and an open mouth, staring look. Yes, like the... Like that, like I was doing earlier. You're welcome. Uh, he struggled to finish thoughts at points and Kate and seated ground on issues like abortion where Democrats have an edge, allegedly. It took just minutes for Democrats to realize how bad it was becoming. Biden looks and sounds terrible. He's incoherent, one Democrat who spent time working in the Biden administration said. Horrific, said another Democratic operative. And one Democrat who worked on campaigns up and down the ballot said simply, we are effed, is what he said. Family-friendly show. Uh, 
The looming question as the debate came to a close was almost existential. Should someone else top the Democratic ticket? It's hard to argue that Biden should be our nominee, said an operative who's worked on campaigns at all levels for over a decade. This debate was historic for many reasons, but not least because it is taking place before each man is formally nominated at their respective conventions. The Democratic National Convention is set to convene August 19th in Chicago, and what a day that's going to be. Democrats have spent much of the past year hand-wringing about Biden's chances of beating Trump in an election many view as an existential one that will decide the very survival of American democracy. Almost no one actually views it like that, by the way. But Biden himself was determined to be the one to take on Trump, at one point even saying directly, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running. No serious Democratic challenger stepped up to run against Biden, and at this point in the campaign, he'd have to decide to step aside if Democrats were to pick another nominee. If Biden did withdraw, the Democrat nomination would be decided on the floor. Democrats were even talking about who it might be instead. One said, or, if I was Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer, I'd be making calls tonight, one said. So as we end, what does it mean, is Biden done as the nominee? And the answer is, I don't know, and none of us actually really do know. If the Democrats are smart, probably so, because the man will lose a general election. I feel more confident after I, in saying that. After seeing that, I'll be interested to see what the polling says after this. Not that that means a whole lot still this far out. Polling doesn't mean a whole lot until you get to the, kind of the month running up the election. But I will be interested to see how much the polling shifts. I think Biden is done as far as his general election chances go, if it's even semi-legit. Um... So it'd be very tough for Democrats to force him to step aside and then with nominate a new candidate, but I think they have to. I think their best choice, it can't be Kamala. I don't think it's be Michelle Obama. I don't think she's as popular as some people think. I think she'd be stronger than Joe or Kamala, but I don't think she's like this beloved first former first lady. I think the best candidate for them is probably Gavin Newsom because he's a slick snake oil salesman um, who will... He can play, I think I heard Mark Dice say it, as the reluctant nominee. He, he was at the debate um, on Thursday night and was one of the only ones there who was actually praising Biden's performance and just talking about how, you know, how great Biden was. And this way he can play the role of, you know, well, <clears throat> Biden stepped aside. I didn't want to have to be the Democrat nominee for president. I was supporting President Biden. And, you know, this is our, this is our um, chance to... Um, this is our chance to kind of, uh, you know, run in Biden's name and in his honor. So I guess I'll be the nominee since my country calls for because I'm running against Hitler. So I think um, their best choice would be Newsom. I don't know if it's going to happen. It's going to be a hard pitch to, to voters to get an new, entirely new nominee in only three months leading up to the election. But we'll see. What do you all think? Let me know in the comment section below. In the words of our great president, look here, Jack. I'll challenge you to push-ups, but that's neither here nor there. Don't forget to subscribe to the Fight and Revive YouTube channel and help us reach more people with our conservative message.